greatest country. You live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, you're free to come and go as you please. Nobody questions you. Uh, you can be anything you want to be, regardless of what it is. Uh, but in in the process of receiving all these wonderful gifts, you, you owe something back. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go into the military, even though I encourage it. Uh, military is a great learning experience, particularly uh, for a kid coming out of high school. Uh, just, just to teach you how to uh, come to work on time and, and work while you're at work. Uh, plus it pays you while you're there and then ed education when you get out. Uh, but you, there's always something that's, oh, nothing's free, everything costs something. Mm -hmm. And uh, approach, approach it that way and just be yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the proper salute to Robert M. Patterson. Two. A member of American Legion Post, 30 and a member of American Legion Post 30 in Lincolnton, North Carolina, our next speaker earned the Medal of Honor for his amazing bravery and valor during a 1968 firefight near Le Chou, Vietnam. A specialist for at the time, he advanced under a hell of enemy fire as the leading squad from his platoon was, point, was pinned down. Despite the extreme danger, he singly handedly used his rifle and grenades to destroy five enemy bunkers, kill eight enemy, eight enemy soldiers, and capture seven weapons. Following his action, he would be promoted to sergeant and eventually served in the Gulf War and retire from the Army as a command sergeant major. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true American hero, Robert M. Patterson. By the way, sir, my first assignment as a command sergeant major was sergeant major of the 1st 27th Infantry Wolfhounds. Ah, yeah, we had a mascot named Koshak. It's a Russian wolfhound. When I left, he had a body count of 32. Ah, uh, in the Army, we have a saying. If you give a Sergeant Major a microphone and a captive audience, he'll talk for three hours. I am a Sergeant Major. I have a microphone. In fact, I got two of them. And you ain't going nowhere. But for your sake, my wife told me, keep it simple, stupid. So, uh, I am the Army's proverbial one. She ticked me off on Sunday night. I showed her butt Monday morning. I dropped out of high school to 12th grade and joined the Army. Really showed her. Got my first Article 15 in basic training. from a full bird colonel. I didn't want them juniors. Ah, got my second one in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. That lieutenant told me I couldn't drive, bring my car on post till I put mufflers on it. Ain't no lieutenant gonna tell me I can't drive my car. Article 15. I got my third one. In Vietnam, from a gentleman named Julius Beckton. Julius grew up to become the first black three-star general in the United States Army. And the whole time he gave me that, was giving me that Article 15, he was laughing. And I had figured out by then, keep your mouth shut. 
But I was wondering, what the heck does he find so funny? Ran into him years later in a parade in Austin, and I looked at him and I said, sir, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. I says, uh, what did you find, when you gave me that article 15, what did you find so funny? And he started laughing. I said, that's what I mean. What was so funny? And he looked at me and said, Sergeant Major, I'm the only commander that can say he recommended a person for a Medal of Honor in the morning and gave him an Article 15 in the afternoon. <laughs> My first one was for being two hours late coming back from a weekend pass. When that colonel got through with me, I was never late again in my 26 years in the Army. My second one was for disobeying an order. My, my third one should have been a court-martial, sleeping on guard duty. <laughs> uh, I have enjoyed my time in the military, especially with soldiers, and I do miss them quite a bit. I did, uh, when I retired from the military, I went to work for the Department of Veterans Affairs, giving away their money. I was good at that one, too. Uh, so help, helping the soldiers, and, and actually I still now, still work every once in a while to help someone down in, I live in Pensacola, Florida, or outside of Pensacola. Uh, I live in Pace. Go. <laughs> Go find it. <laughs> it's like my hometown where I was born, Carpenter. You know the old saying, if you blink, you miss it. Think about blinking. You already missed. That's the size of pace. Uh, so I do uh, still work w uh, with uh, some veterans every once in a while. I got a gentleman now from Crestview that I'm working with him, and I really don't understand what the VA is doing. But I'll figure it out. I'll get them. Uh, God, I miss my soldiers, though. The worst job, the best job you can have in the Army is a, as a first sergeant. The worst job you can have in the Army is a command sergeant major, because you lose all contact with the soldiers, and that's the most important thing out there. I, I, I am thrilled to be here with you. And uh, who was somebody was talking about leadership? And, and my, I'm a firm believer that there's no such thing as a natural born leader. Leaders are developed. By the way, what I was going to really talk about today, I'm going to talk about even though I was told not to. I don't pay attention very well. Our country's in trouble. I, uh, I could honestly look uh, uh, at Washington, D.C., the way the politicians and all were talking when the Gulf War or when the when we started moving into our Afghanistan. And I knew right then they were going to do the same thing that they did to the Vietnam veterans. They were going to turn their backs on them. And sure enough, they did. We need to get them out, send them back, and put them in a soup line somewhere. We need leaders that are going to be leaders, not mouthpieces. You know, I was, I was a cavalry scout, and my most valued asset that I had was my integrity. And if we can't find some people with integrity to put in Washington, D.C., that's going to do what they say, regardless of what the results are, then we're going to lose our country. I don't want to. I don't want to pick up a gun again, but that's okay. I got, I got a few, and I'm willing to pick them up. I got baby. Everybody's got something to reach out and touch you. Baby, reach out, slap the living crap at you. <laughs> and I'll pick her up. But we, we need to, we need to seriously look at who is running for office. 
and find out, you know, computers are great, even though I'm an idiot when it comes to a computer. They're great. You can find out anything you want to about a person on a computer. So we need to get on a computer, find out what that person, who that person is, what do they represent, what do they stand for? And if they don't stand for the United States of America, don't put them up there. And I guess I'll shut up with that one. Uh, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Robert, don't leave yet. I know that you're already a member of the American Legion. But I have a diamond lapel pin I'll present you over here, and I would like to, that I'd like to give you. I know that I speak from this entire delegation in saying we are proud to serve with you in the American Legion. <laughs>